Welcome to Basic Hand Orthosis Fabrication, a just-in-time training guide. This is a refresher training that will help you on how to fabricate a resting hand splint. In order to complete this program, you have to gather your equipment, tools, and materials, watch this video, and use the manual as an aid, and you have to practice. You may practice while watching this video or after watching this video, and you may want to get a model for immediate application of the steps. The following are the equipment, tools, and materials needed for fabrication. Low temperature thermoplastic, heating pan set at 135 to 180 degree Fahrenheit, spatula, towel, pencil, paper, scissors, ruler, goniometer, water spray, oil, and Velcro. Fabricating of resting hand splint has six steps. First, pattern making. Second, pattern fitting. Third, thermoplastic cutting. Fourth, molding. Fifth, strapping. And sixth, home instruction for orthotic care and orthotic use. Okay, let's start! Pattern making. Place the person's hand flat down on a paper towel and mark A for the recurrent process of the elbow. And then, trace the outline of the upper extremity from one side of the elbow to the other. Then, mark B for ulnar styloid C for the PAP of the 5th digit, D for the middle finger, E for the second web space, F for the PAP of the second digit, G for the first web space, H for the CMC joint of the thumb, I for radial styloid. And then, draw a line across indicating two-thirds of the length of the forearm. You could use ruler to measure this. And then, extend a line from about 1 half to 1 inch beyond the landmarks. Then, draw a dotted vertical line from the second web space and dotted horizontal line from first web space and mark the intersection as J. And then, mark a K 1 inch from the radial side of G. Connect the line from the forearm to B, C, D, F, between G and K, Curve going to H, vertical line to J, and connect I at the line of the two-thirds of forearm. Pattern Fitting Instruct the patient to rest the elbow on the table. The arm should be vertical and hand relaxed. You may also position the patient with forearm pronated or with forearm supinated. Cut out the pattern and put it to the appropriate joint placement. Remember to check the four areas. The length of the finger pan, the thumb throw, the forearm throw, and the feet of the C-bar. Make necessary adjustment on the pattern if needed. With a pencil, trace the pattern on the sheet of thermoplastic material. Now, put some oil on the thermoplastic to avoid damage while submerging this in hot water. Thermoplastic Cutting Heat the thermoplastic and cut the pattern out. Make sure that the edges are smooth and free of dirt or pencil marks. Please refer to the manual to check other options of cutting the thermoplastic. Molding 
In getting the thermoplastic out, you may use splint strainer or flat spatula to avoid stretching it and make unnecessary marks. Position the patient's hand and place the thermoplastic. Please see the screen for the specific joint positions. Now, get the palmar arc and mold the finger pan. Use the ulnar side of your palm to avoid unnecessary marks. And then, mold the C-bar. Let the gravity assist in molding the wrist and forearm. Please be mindful of the position of the wrist when molding the hand. Spray water to hasten the cooling process. Now, check the feet of your splint. Remember, the length is two-thirds of the forearm and the width is one-half of the circumference of the hand and forearm. Submerge and cut the area that needs trimming. Make sure to maintain the smooth edges of the splint. Proximal end should also be flared. Use goniometer to check for the joint positions, but if you're competent enough, the use of goniometer is optional. Now check the following. The wrist should have an adequate support. The finger pan is wide enough for all the fingers and has an adequate length. The thumb throw has an adequate length. Orthosis is two-thirds of the length of the forearm and half of the width of the forearm and hand. The arches of the hand are supported and maintained. Make sure that the orthosis does not cause any pressure areas. Strapping The straps should be across the PIP joint, proximal to MCP joints, for the thumb, proximal to IP joint, across the wrist, and across the proximal forearm throw. Now, mark the landmarks for strapping. Make sure to round the corners of your straps. Now, let the client wear the orthosis for the first 30 minutes and observe for any pressure areas and make necessary adjustments. While waiting, you could instruct the patient for the orthotic care and orthotic use of the orthosis. Home instruction for orthotic care and orthotic use Give the pagsuot at pag-alaga sa splint form and discuss the orthotic care and use and ask for return demonstration. Make sure that all joints are in all proper placement. Wearing schedule. Increase the wearing time by 30 to 60 minutes on and off as tolerated until maximum time reached. Remove when taking a bath or performing exercises. Now, that's the end of your training. You may replay this video to practice again.